approximation. Yep. So Pyre Apple is indeed it's, it's kind of a model that's built into the CPU. Um, I would certainly like to use real power consumption. I've been playing around with a couple of devices to measure the CPU consumption of um, uh, directly from hardware. Um, but it's it's not something I've had a chance to do yet. Um, primary reason for using Pyre Apple is it's simple. Um, it was just loading a, a library and um, away you go. Um, but I, I would certainly like to look at real power consumption um, if, if I can find a way to do it. Yeah, thank you. And thank you, Alex, for the, for the comment about the, the CPU cache usage. And here, uh, a question from Wes Weimer. Can you elaborate or speculate a bit more on relevant non-structural hyperparameters? For example, are there some other promising ones? What do they have in common? Um, yeah, so I, I, I think people can see us now. It looks like we were missed out at the beginning there. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, yeah, that's that's a, a great question. I mean, the, the obvious things are the choice of um, training or learning algorithm. Um, so, you know, using gradient descent or something else, uh, basically. Um, I think these would be the, the obvious things. Um, <laughs> I guess you might be splitting hairs by calling something structural or non-structural because you might say that the um, activation functions in the neurons, are they structural or not? Uh, arguable either way. Um, but yeah, I, I think the likely most promising one is the, the choice, the, the learning algorithm, um, because that will de definitely affect the energy consumption for training um, and implicitly is going to change the, the kind of model that you get at the end as well. Um, so may have an impact on inference, but um, obviously still a bit open uh, on that at the moment. Gotcha. It seems there might be some issue on the microphone here, which seems to solve. So let me know if you guys still have um, difficult hearing us. All right, now we have uh, two questions from Bill Landon. First one is, any feel for reliability of a Pyrex about reliability thing? Amark has been uh, using instruction count and I have used nanoseconds. Uh, Marcus has measured uh, jewels. So that's the first question you want to go, Sandy? Sure. Um, I don't have a direct feel for it, um, which which is probably pretty bad. Um, I, I One thing that we really need to do with this stuff is is to validate the, the, the different approach. I think there'd be quite an interesting study in comparing the the different um, different ways of measuring energy. Um, I know Marcus's stuff where he, he was, I, I'm trying to remember if he was using probes or if he was looking at um, um, battery count, it was all on mobile devices um, and you got crazy results. This is Marcus Wagner um, has published a few papers on this where you see kind of energy consumption on mobile apps are doing this. Um, and, you know, it'd be really interesting to try comparing um, the you know, more model based approaches with what he's doing. Um, I can see that there's a suggestion for um, ways of measuring eric thank you for that very much because i um certainly wanting to investigate more approaches um so yeah the second question from bill is any tie-in with approximate computing fast multiply for a sigmoid 600 oh great point um absolutely <laughs> um yeah because i i think this is an as i kind of said in my opening i think this is very much uh, an area where we can cope with some error so you know um let's let's learn from uh, the approximate computing approaches as well you know throw in the possibility for errors where we're almost well we're not quite guaranteed but we've, we've got a much better chance of saving some energy hmm. yeah i think maybe as the host i have the privilege to ask a question myself so i i, I remember in your paper you mentioned that you choose to use a python cycle learn library instead of weka i'm just curious for future research who want to do this kind of studies the the choice of the machine learning platform or models would you foresee any effects just because of the choice of that on your results um, almost certainly. So one uh, piece of earlier work that I did was using Weka, and we got rather different results. I mean, admittedly, I was trying different hyperparameters too, but we we managed to minimise energy and error rate, and you know we got a trade-off here using Scikit-Learn. Um, one of the things I'm going to try and 
retread now is doing the same things as I did with Weka in Scikit-Learn and seeing if the there is much of a difference. I mean, in th in principle, there shouldn't be, but you know, totally different implementations, and um, you know, there's there's got to be some differences there. Gotcha. So uh, I guess the other question is, um, like you emphasized, that I I also recently heard the term called green AI because people started being so concerned about energy consumed. Uh, it's, it's becoming a more important topic right now. I wonder for for doing research like uh, your work. What are the biggest challenges? What are the hardest part when you're doing the work that you want to let us know and prepare for that? Um, hardest challenges. Um, one is this whole question around measurement, and actually, it's a. It doesn't matter how how you cut it. It's a noisy, noisy measurement to be making. Um, so you know how how we manage to do that efficiently and reliably. That's that's a big challenge, um, and. You know the the other side of measurement, which is just physically doing it in a way that's the general. You know, I'm I'm looking at using this approach using Pyrapple, which is focused on Xeon CPUs, but you know that's going to be applicable probably to the the machine that I was doing the training on. Um, you know, trying to come up with a general approach is going to need an investment in a lot of hardware as well. Gotcha. Yeah. So uh, I, I'm sure a lot of our audience have also heard of this term called SE for AI. I'm sure that's also relevant to your work. So I know that one big challenge in SE for AI right now is uh, as a software engineering people, how can we even define like a concept, like correctness, that kind of stuff. So I don't know, like, you know, when we apply search-based algorithm to this problem, what are your thoughts on, you know, defining your, let's say, fitness ob or objective functions if you have one and also, yeah, that was a correctness thing because it's a totally different area. It's not a normal program. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's that is the broader point that I'm making is that the, the idea of correctness here is it boils down to error rate, um, or accuracy, or whatever precise um, measure you you wanting to make. But um, I I think where we're talking machine learning and we've got this kind of much fuzzier idea of correctness um, i think there is a bit more potential for trade-off there um there isn't necessarily a perfect model um and so you know, let's exploit that and also i can see right now in the chat to our audience also provides many very interesting uh links for papers relevant to this topic so yeah, well, stuff, we have 48 seconds so let me try if i can actually say what's the comment here could this approach be combined with a non-gi sampling or pre-filtering approach for minimizing training data sandy what do you think uh yes probably <laughs> that's a great idea um <laughs> i might try that yeah, maybe this sounds something the community can check together in the future. Yeah. Yep. All right, we have 15 minutes. Great. Thank you very much for the, yeah. the comments. There's some good stuff there. <laughs> right, so to avoid like a hard cut. So yeah, I think Sandy will be there in the discussion room if there's any more questions, everyone. Thank you so much for the questions and the comments and the links. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Okay, I need to go, Sandy, because I'm chairing the next session too, okay? Yep. I think it's a great Q&A session. Oh. Wait, should I leave the... Yeah. Huh.